Happy Friday, welcome back to Drinking By Myself. My name is Emma, and today we have reached the point in the year where I would usually do my best books of 2022. However, I very recently did a World Cup of books for 2022, which basically told you what all my favourite books were in there anyway, and I don't think I've read anything since that would bump any of those off the list. And so, we're doing something a little bit different. Instead of my favourite books of the year, I'm going to tell you my girlfriend's favourite books of the year. This video is very kindly being sponsored by Ana Luisa. I am modelling some of my latest jewellery pieces, which I will show you a little bit later into the video. We talk a lot on this channel about how my girlfriend, codenamed Raph, has really good taste in books. She has recommended me the vast majority of the books that I counted as my favourites this year. I know a lot of you are curious to learn more about Raph, so I've done a little interview with her. She will not be joining me. She is a mysterious figure not to be seen on this channel, but she did make a list of her favourite books. I did a little interview to learn more about each one and why she liked it. A lot of them are books that I've also read and loved, but also a lot of them are books that I have yet to read. I'm kind of taking this as like my personal recommendations, mostly, although we do have some differences in the genres that we like. So for example, Raph really likes historical fiction and I don't always as much, or don't always like the same time periods, so there are some ways that we go our separate ways. Anyway, starting with Raph's absolute favourite book of the year, that was Still Life by Sarah Winman. And this, if you watch my World Cup, I don't want to ruin how far it got in the competition, but it did do very well, I'll tell you that much. This was a brilliant book. You've heard me talk about it a lot. This is a book about a very eccentric, hilarious cast of characters. It's split between London and Florence as their lives take them from one city to another and it spans several decades in their lives and it's really funny and heartwarming and gorgeous. So, this one was absolute number one top of Raph's list and she began her interview, I hadn't even started asking anything. She said, can I say some things about it please? And I said yes and she said I would marry it. So this was her favourite of the year. She also said that she has bought this for everyone. It's a book that she would recommend really widely. So she's bought this for a lot of people's presents and talks about it all the time. She said it was a perfect book. And then she said perfect again about seven times. For Early Morning Riser by Catherine Heine, she said that if she hadn't already married Still Life, she would contemplate marrying this one. Again, if you watch my World Cup of Books, you'll see how far this one gets in the competition. I adored this book. It's very, very similar to Still Life. So it's funny that both of us ended up with these two books very high up in our favourite books of the year because they're essentially the same book. Again, this one is funny. Again, it's got a big eccentric cast of characters. Again, it spans quite a long period in their lives. This one, not quite as long, it's about 17 years, whereas this one is about five decades or more. They're definitely for the same kind of reader. So Raph described this book as just lovely. As you remember, so she read it not very long before I read it, and while she was reading it, she kept talking out loud to me about how lovely it was, about how much she was enjoying it. So I picked it up pretty much straight after. She also cried at the end, but like from happiness, because it was a really sweet, moving ending. And she said that this book is really, really funny in a way that not many books manage to be. Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. I've still got my proof copy here because as beautiful as the finished cover is, and I'll show you here, this proof is just amazing. It's so shimmery. So this is one that I'm keeping on my shelf. So again, I loved this book. Raph's exact words about this one were, Gosh, just the cleverest book. She said that she loved the structure. It's like Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell, which is a book that I have not read myself, but I know is very popular. So she said this uses the same structure in that it's like an onion with all of the different layers. However, importantly, it is half the size of Cloud Atlas. This book is complicated in structure, but very, very easy to read. I think both of us found that. So Raph said that she thinks about this book all the time and that she had no idea where it was going while she was reading it. She finished by saying that she thinks Emily St. John Mandel is a genius. She also loved Station Eleven and loved The Glass Hotel. I agree with all of that. I love both of those books. There are Easter eggs in this book, which are really fun. All three of those books have Easter eggs for each other. So if you read all of them, you pick up on things, which is just good fun. And her final quote was, fucking amazing. Vladimir by Julia May Jonas is another of those books that Raph just said she was really enjoying reading it while she was reading and I do remember her talking aloud about how much she was enjoying it a lot. She had been warned that this book goes crazy towards the end uh, but said boy did I underestimate how much. I would agree with that. I also then read this book on holiday and it goes off the rails. 
but in a great way. Raph said this one had to feature pretty highly because she loves a campus novel. It is very witty. It's quite like spiky, sharp humour. It's quite uncomfortable to read in certain ways. She also said that the main male character is very sexy for a man. And I think the main thing that makes this book so memorable is how complicated the narrator is, the main female main character. She is a very difficult character to fully understand and to fully like and that's what makes the book so compelling. This feels like a perfect time to pause and show you my latest Ana Luisa pieces and to tell you that I have exciting news, I have been given a bigger discount to share with you all. So if you use my new code, which is now myshelf20, you can get a 20% discount off any of the jewelry pieces I'm about to show you, or more. Make sure to click the link in my description box and go through and browse their website. For example, you could get the Amelia earrings that are £54 full price, but again, do use my code to make sure you get your discount. These are gorgeous little ear climbers. There's loads of different ways that you could wear them. So for example, I've got one here on my earlobe. I've also put the other one up at the top of my cartilage where I think it looks pretty fun. I always love adding to my ring collection with Ana Luisa and so I have embraced the 90s with my mood ring. It is currently a very deep blue, which means I am happy, which is very accurate because I'm very happy with my new purchases and you can be too. The mood ring is £64 full price, but again, make sure to click my link and use my code. And then finally, I got the absolutely beautiful Sky set, which is just divine. You could wear these separately or they look absolutely beautiful stacked together like this. So this set is £74 full price. Once again, click my link, use my code. This kind of set really plays into a lot of what I love about Anna Louise's style. So much of their jewellery is designed to be stacked together and worn in different combinations. So I have a massive Anna Louise collection now and I love playing around with the different ways I can wear each piece together. I've been partnered with Anna Louise for a couple of years now and it's a partnership that I'm just really proud of. I really love how high quality all of their jewellery is, how sustainable their mission is. They're a company that are really trying to do good and these are pieces that are built to last. My Anna Louise collection is just growing. I get compliments on it wherever I go. So click my link, go through and browse their website. They're always, always getting new designs in. So it's really good fun. Raph's next favourite book, these are not in any order by the way other than the fact that Still Life was in the top, the rest are in a random order. The next on the list is Free Love by Tessa Hadley and this is actually the first book on this list that I haven't read. Raph described this book as exactly the kind of book that she just loves reading. She really likes this author, Tessa Hadley, who I've never read from, who apparently always focuses on family relationships. That's the kind of book that I love reading too, I should give her a try. This book is a little bit different from Tessa Hadley's other books. It's the first one that is set in the 1960s. So Raph said she had a lot of fun being transported to this different time. It's another of those books that she would have bought for everyone if she hadn't already bought them, still life. Apparently the reviews of this one were mean, but Raph disagrees. The Whalebone Theatre by Joanna Quinn is another book that I haven't read. She's got a lovely edition here, The Blue Spredges. So this one she described as a lovely book. This is historical fiction. She loved the setting in Dorset. It starts off being about this rather bossy little girl and Raph said that she really loved those early sections of the book with the little girl and with this theatre on the beach. And she liked that a lot more than the later sections. So time kind of moves on and it goes into wartime and Raph said the poet slightly petered out at those parts. So she preferred the early parts, but she loved those so much that this still felt like a really lovely book for her to include in her favorites of the year. It's another book with an eccentric cast of characters that does seem to be a theme that Raph and I both enjoy. So this one kind of reminded her of I Captured a Castle, which is a lovely book. So this is kind of an example of the type of book where our tastes slightly differ and I will say more on that in a minute. A bit later on in the video I'm going to talk about some of the books that I recommended her and we're going to try and do some swaps because our favourite kinds of books often completely overlap. But Raph also loves historical fiction which I don't so much and I love thrillers which she doesn't so much and so we're going to kind of experiment with seeing where in each other's genres we can find books that we love. So Raph wasn't sure that this would be one for me, but she loved it. Another historical fiction on the list is Shrines of Gaiety by Kate Atkinson. Again, I have not read this one yet. Raph said that this could kind of be a companion novel to The Wellbeing Theatre. They actually look beautiful together. She said it felt like the characters in these books could realistically know each other. 
So Raph loves Kate Atkinson. She has read every single one of her books and this is something different. This one is set in a nightclub in the 1920s. So Raph said she loved reading about Soho in the 20s. It was fascinating. It felt like a lot of it hadn't changed at all. She compared it to Vile Bodies, which is another book I will be talking about later on in the video. If she had to sum it up in three words, sex, drugs and jazz. She did say that she felt slightly let down by the ending in that it did something she would have rather that it didn't. Back to a book that I have read, The Twyford Code by Janice Hallett. We actually buddy read this one and both of us have said that we really enjoyed the book, it was a great book, but we think that it was the buddy reading experience that elevated this book to one of our favourites of the year. Both of us just loved that reading experience so much. It's a really good one for buddy reading because it's a puzzle that you're trying to solve as you go along. It's a really great one to chat to the other person about and come up with your theories. Raph described this one as a hoot, which I would agree with. It's a lot about Enid Blyton and Ina Blyton, as problematic as it has been rightly pointed out that um, a lot of elements in her books and about her as a character are now, she was, for both of us, one of our first book loves. That's kind of how we remember getting into reading, was reading Ina Blyton books. And so this book, I felt like really lovingly explored that. It, it's not actually about Ina Blyton. It's about a character called something, Edith Twyford or something, who's clearly based on Enid Blyton. And it did feel like a love letter to Enid Blyton, but while also acknowledging, <laughs> um, you know, viewing Enid Blyton and her books through a modern lens. The Enid Blyton stuff is just one part of the story. It's also a puzzle. Somebody finds transcripts of voice notes and you're trying to work out what they mean. It leads you on this trail. It's a really, really good fun book. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevlin is a book that a lot of people have been talking about this year. I have not yet read it, but I think I will. So Raph read this one because loads of people were talking about it, loads of people had recommended it to her, she read lots of good reviews, and a friend actually gave her this proof and said, don't let the gaming aspect put you off. And so Raph read it and totally agreed with that. Because I also was like, I don't really know anything about gaming, is this going to be for me? And she said, it's fascinating, don't let that put you off. And actually she said that she learned a lot and found herself like really interested in the creativity of the people who make games. So Raph described this book as a nicer, a little life um, and said that she liked the book more and more and more as she went along. I need to pick it up. The Schoolhouse by Sophie Ward is the second novel by Sophie Ward. The first one was book along listed and the second one is totally different. Raph said she actually never would have guessed that the books were written by the same person. I haven't read either, but I am really interested in this one. So Raph said this is sort of just a really clever police procedural, a really well-written police procedural. She really likes the setting of the book. It's set kind of around the part of London that we spend a lot of time in, and so she really enjoyed that. Um, but says that she doesn't really know anyone else who has read it, uh, so I'll have to read it next. Um, and that because the books that Sophie Ward has written were so different, she's really interested to see what kind of thing she will read next. Sorry, she will write next. <laughs> I personally don't love the cover, it makes me feel a little nauseous, so I might wait and see what the paperback looks like and buy that instead. So those were mostly Raph's favourite books of the year. I'm going to talk about four more books, and this is kind of a little subsection, um, because I have made a video before about reading books that Raph recommended to me and um, she's very good at recommending books to me, as I said at the beginning. And someone actually commented saying they'd love to hear a bit about some of the books that I've recommended to her. And so I've got four books on this list. Um, I recommend other books to her, but four books here that Raph has particularly enjoyed that I have recommended to her. First up, Vile Bodies by Evelyn Moore. Vile Bodies, actually, hang on, have a poster right there on my wall. It's a book that I always say is my favourite book. I've kind of been saying that since I first read it as a teenager. I just absolutely adored this one and so Raph was of course very intrigued to read it. She had read other even more books but not this one and she said that this one was dripping with wit um, but also very very sad and again she really liked the setting and the time period and that these two books which are written around the same period that she loved wouldn't exist without Even and More, so it's really fascinating to read this. Even and More is sort of a character in Shrines of Gaiety, not directly, not named that, but you can sort of tell there's inspiration. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, a booktube favourite. 
Um, I recommended this one to Raph after we both read Great Circle, which is quite a similar format. And so I recommended this one as a different style in the same kind of format. Um, and yeah, Raph said that she really enjoyed this one. She had already read Daisy Jones and the Six and loved that. So she knew she did like this author. It is more commercial than she usually reads. Um, but yeah, she loved Daisy Jones. So she knew she'd like this one. So it took her a few chapters to get into it, but then she was completely gripped. She loved the Hollywood glamour. And between this book and Daisy Jones, just talked about how clever it is, this um, this like world building that Taylor Jenkins Reid really does, where she creates these fictional characters and then gives them a whole body of work that you totally believe exists. It's really, really clever. So for the next one, you know I mentioned how we are trying to swap historical fiction and thrillers and see which books we can enjoy. I had a go at recommending Raph a thriller, which is Three Hours by Rosamond Lupton. I picked this one because I found this to be a really gripping page turning thriller, but also a very clever and very thought provoking one. There was a lot to think about after reading it, there was a lot to discuss. Um, and I think it maybe took Raph a little while to get into it, so she wasn't quite sure where it was going at first, but then it really takes off and by the end, agreed that it's really thought provoking. She said that she didn't see where it was going at all um, and that it's a book that will stick with her. It's totally what I found as well. I'm clearly a really intelligent writer. And as of about yesterday, I actually have one more to add to this list uh, because I recommended Raph, one of my favourite books from 2020, which was The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa. It's a really lovely short little book about maths and memory, which I absolutely adored when I read it uh, back in lockdown, back in the first lockdown. And so Raph read this one very, very quickly and really enjoyed it, so added it to the list. Um, Raph loves maths, um, as I do, both kind of nerdy in that way, and it was very sweet watching her read this because she was actually like doing the maths as she went. There's a page right here next to me <laughs> covered in her scribbles as she was like trying to do the maths puzzles as it went along and doing them successfully. She described this book as charming and lovely and understated and she loved the hint of romance. I need to read this one again. So there you go, those were Raph's favourite books of the year in place of doing my own favourite books of the year. If you are interested in mine I will link below to that World Cup video so you can go over and see all of the books that I loved the most in 2022 battled out against each other. And if you want to look really pretty and glamorous while you do that, you might as well click the link in my description and go to the Anna Louisa website. And don't forget to use my code MYSHELF20 for 20% off all of your jewellery purchases. So that is it for me and I'll see you next time. It's the end of the year Everywhere on TV Couples and Christmas trees Give